is a student at Lakeshore High School and was recently named the Lakeshore High Student of the Month. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Mr. Devon, could you come up, please? Whoop, whoop. Invocation. Okay. Ms. Pichon? Ms. Lyon? Let us bow our heads. O Holy One, known by many names, including Almighty God, we ask your blessings on the people here tonight who have been called to lead the community in which we live, work, and play. We ask that you would put your hand of blessing on this parish, this council, and all its initiatives, and with your divine guidance, lead us through this meeting. Inspire us to speak out when it's time to speak, and grant us discipline to listen patiently and receptively when it's time to listen. May we always be guided by the spirit of community, justice, and love. Thank you for the gift of life, the privilege to be involved in such meaningful work for sustenance and for friendship. Thank you, O Holy One, for all your abundant blessings and for loving us unconditionally despite our ungodly shortcomings. This is only possible because of your boundless love and gracious nature. This we pray in the name of all that we hold sacred and holy, all that we hold good and right and true. Amen. Amen. Mr. Devon. allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Mr. Devon. Teresa, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Dean? Yeah. Mr. Fitzgerald? Yeah. Mr. Thompson? Mr. Toledano? Present. Mr. Tanner? Here. Mr. Belisario? Here. Mr. Lorino? Here. Mr. Groby? Here. Mr. Canulet? Ms. O'Brien? Here. Mr. Stefanczyk? Here. Mr. Bender? Ms. Blanchard, Mr. Smith, you have a quorum. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, first, we'll go to uh, special items. Number one, resolution CS number C-6115, resolution establishing adjusted millage rates for the year 2019. Ms. Long. Yes, sir, this resolution will uh, um, levy millages for 2019 at the same rate as they were levied in 2018. And if you look at the administrative comment, we also provide for you the maximum authorized levy for these millages. And in each case, um, I think except one, it is less than the maximum. And for one lighting district, it is the same as the maximum. Thank you. Motion by Mr. Taladano. We don't have to vote on it. That's correct. Second? Second. Second by Mr. Malliser. Mr. Carlo? I think they do need to vote. Thank you. Uh, Carlo Hernandez. I have comments regarding this. Uh, and it's, it's on page four of uh, the, um, <clears throat> the resolution. And just for the public's sake, in case they haven't seen it, these are 13 millages. There are four columns in there, the, ma the 2019 maximum authorized levy, the 2018 levy, the 2019 adjusted millage, and then the 2019 adjusted maximum millage. Now, the co my comments are focused on 
the last two, the 2019 adjusted millage and the 2019 adjusted maximum millage. It's interesting that under parish government, the first two parish alimony, rural parish alimony cities, they're the same, the, the 2019 adjusted millage and the 2019 maximum millage. Yet the next three, parish maintenance, public health, animal services, are, all, are, are different. And that concerns me. Other, other agencies, the Library, Council on Aging, Stark, St. Tammany Parish Corner, again, they're all the same. Under districts, the lighting districts, five, five of the six, uh, excuse me, four, one, two, three, four, five of, the, uh, of, of those listed here are, are, are different. Again, only lighting district number six is, is the same. Why I'm concerned about that, if you, if you it, it seems to me that there is no reason why we shouldn't have the maximum 2019 adjusted millage the same as the 2019 adjusted millage, unless there is some intent to increase it. If there is, I mean, you have it on, on others already. The, the, the three other agencies, the Library, Council on Aging, Stark, St. Tammany Paris Coroner, the rural and the city's alimony uh, sections, and then lighting district number six are all the same for, for those two. But yet the others are not. And, and they're all increased under the maximum portion of it. And, and the drainage maintenance, 1.77, and then the max is 2.08. Under public health, 1.77, and the max is 1.78. Slight difference. Animal services, 0.82, and then the max is 1.00. Under the lighting districts, all except for that one is, is, is the same. And, and, and they're, they're lighting district one, 4.13. Lighting district one again, the max, 4.15. Lighting district number four, 3.97, 4.01 is the max. Lighting district number five, 3.07, the max is 4.84. Lighting district number seven, 2.97 is the adjusted millage, and then 3.00 is the max. So I'm wondering why can't the max be the same as the adjusted millage? We already have, you already have a listing of where the max authorized levy is, but, and so, I'm wondering, okay, we recognize that, but why, why the adjusted max can't be the same as the adjusted millage, unless there's some intent to increase it at some point in, in 2019? It would seem to me you already have it the same for six of the other 13. Why not have all 13 the same as the, the adjusted millage and the adjusted maximum millage? That's, those are my comments. Thank, Thank you, sir. Uh, Ms. Long. Um, yes, sir. So if I can explain for you, the administrative comment is for informational purposes, and all of these figures come from the Legislative Auditor's Office. So when a reassessment occurred in 2016, they provided all these um, millage, adjusted millages, adjusted maximum millage, and it also determines what type of public notice you're required to have and whether or not it's actually considered a roll-up. Sometimes, it, generally, the difference has to do when, if I'll take, for example, animal services. So the adjusted maximum millage, you'll remember it was recently um, renewed in December, whereas um, the millage that was levied last year in 2018, so we could levy, we can levy up to one mill, but our we're recommending that you levy the same millage as we did in 2018. So I guess just to repeat that these calculations are all made by the Legislative Auditor's Office, provided to the assessor for every taxing body, which are then provided to the parish. So we wanted to provide all the information possible. But tonight, what you are levying is in the resolution itself, and that is the adjusted millage, and it is the same as we levied in 2018. We would have to come back to you and uh, adopt a new resolution if we were to uh, change from this, the ones that we're proposing tonight. So if we were going to raise it, like concerns uh, Mr. Hernandez has, you would have to come back to the council Correct. with a separate resolution and lay it out and explain to us what, what's going and on. And we may that. also have to meet um, a number of public notice Correct. with regard to advertisements in the paper. Um, a public hearing and such if we were going to consider increasing the millage. Okay, so just, just for the record, you cannot do that on your own? No, sir. I didn't think so, but I just wanted to be clear. Okay. Thank you, sir. 
We so have a, we had a motion by Mr. Taladano, second by Mr. Uh, Balacero. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Thank you. Number two, resolution CS number C-6116, resolution establishing parcel fees for the year 2019. Ms. Long. Yes, sir. This resolution will adopt parcel fees. As you've seen, the first one had to do with millages, and this one is parcel fees. And on the administrative comment, we also tell you what the maximum authorized fee is. These fees are not subject to reassessment. That's why there's not a... Um, adjusted maximum um, par parcel fee. So okay. the amount that was uh, voted on by the voters is the maximum authorized fee, and then we provided for you what we uh, levied in 2018, and we're proposing the same levy for 2019. So that's the difference between the, the number one and number two. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion? Second. M motion by Mr. Taladano, second by Mr. Dean. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Thank you. We'll go to presentations. Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and I hope I don't mess somebody's computer up. And I'll move <laughs> it. <laughs> We try to hold the presentations down to just a couple, but this month we have four, and I think you'll understand why as we read them, and I, I appreciate the extra time Well, you to take your time, Madam President, and you go right ahead. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna call two people up at the same time, and that is Ann Ballard and Greg Crawford. If you guys can come on up. I'm sure all of you recognize these names and these people. So we're gonna start with Ann first, if that's okay, as our employee of the month. Whereas Ann Ballard has been a St. Tammany Parish employee since May of 2007 and serves as, a, as GIS specialist in the Department of Technology Geographical Information System Division. And throughout Ann's tenure, she has consistently and continuously been engaged in every aspect of GIS, from serving the public through special map requests to assisting every St. Tammany Parish government department and St. Tammany Parish agencies. And her data mining, statistical geoanalysis, geoanalysis, and database management allow maps and data to be stored, mined, and graphically displayed in such a manner that facilities retrieval is comprehensive and professionally presented. Her maps are indeed a work of art. Her work has contributed significantly to parish functions, from emergency events to supporting grant applications, and includes work on projects like the National Flood Insurance Program Community Rating System, the Municipal Separate, Separate Storm Sewer System, the Hazard Mitigation Grant Program, the Horizon Oil Spill, and the Waters of the United States Project. Ann Ballard is an exceptional employee, and after 12 years of exemplary service, will retire at the end of May 2019. She'll be missed by all, and we wish her well in her much-deserved retirement. I, Patricia Brister, as president of St. Tammany, do hereby recognize the hard work and accomplishments of Ann Ballard. And I certainly encourage all employees to thank uh, her for her contribution and commitment to St. Tammany Parish. And thank you very much for all you do for us every day, and we will miss you. I'm going to pass that on to you. Later. We're going to get one picture here, and then we'll. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> then I want one of all. Ball three. Thanks. Okay, this one. This one's a tough one too. Greg Crawford has been a dedicated St. Tammany Parish employee since June of 1984 and serves as Area 3 foreman in the Department of Public Works. Greg has diligently worked to advance within the Department of Public Works, and in 2009, he was promoted to Area Foreman, where he has served for the last decade 
by successfully managing the daily operations of the Fritchie South Barn, the Keller Barn, and the Airport Barn. Greg shares his experience and job knowledge with his fellow workers so that they will possess all the skills necessary to further their careers in public works. And he frequently meets with constituents to discuss their needs and works to determine efficient and expedient resolutions to their issues to improve the quality of life for all. Greg Crawford will retire next week after 36 years of exemplary service and will be sincerely missed by all St. Tammany Parish government. So I, Parish President of St. Tammany Parish, do now recognize the hard work and accomplishments of Greg Crawford as another employee of the month for May 2019. We will miss both of these people. They've been an integral part of what we do every day. And I think you all have had deal dealings with Greg, and you're going to miss him the most. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes ma'am. So if you will allow, we'll take one picture with the three of them, and then I'll go yes, on with the yes, other. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Congratulations. Um, next, I would like to ask Stacy and Jim from NAMI to come up, please. This is another proclamation. It's a busy month. Hi, how you doing? Come on up. Come on up here. So, whereas one of four adults and one in ten children or adolescents will experience mental health issues in any given year and one in five U.S. veterans and active military personnel will experience a mental health issue each year with homelessness and suicide all too often, the tragic outcome for those who do not receive adequate mental health services. Mental health is an important part of a person's overall physical health and any citizen, family, age group, or population in the community of St. Tammany Parish can be at risk to experience the impact of mental illness. And there is a significant research that animal companionship, humor, spirituality, religion, recreation, social connections, and work-life balance can help all St. Tammany res residents protect their health and well-being. Mental illness is a highly treatable medical condition affecting the brain, requiring the same concern as cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and other illnesses because it can be equally life-threatening in nature. Early identification and treatment can make a profound difference in the successful management of mental illness and recovery. The Parish of St. Tammany recognizes that mental illness is a significant community health issue and encourages initiatives based on the priority of awareness, education, support, and services. Therefore, I, Patricia Brister, President of St. Tammany Parish, do proclaim the month of May 2019 to be observed in St. Tammany Parish as Mental Health Awareness Month and May 5th as Mental Health Awareness Sunday. I encourage citizens, all citizens of St. Tammany, to learn more about how they too can get involved to aid our community. And that's exactly what Stacy and Jim do with NAMI. So we thank you very much for being here and appreciate all the hard work you do in a very <laughs> difficult circumstance. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Just a minute. Please. Good evening. My name is Jim Rather. I am Vice President of the Board of Directors for NAMI. And on behalf of the entire board, um, its staff, and all the clients that NAMI serves, I want to extend our, our heartfelt thanks to uh, President Brister, Kelly Rabelais, and the entire council for supporting NAMI and its mission. Um, you know, NAMI's mission is to increase awareness and advocate for families of persons with mental illness. And without the parish's support, we would be unable to achieve our mission, and for that we're extremely grateful. Um, 
The parish has supported us in so many ways, from safe haven to the behavioral health task force to helping fund our group home. Um, there are countless other examples, and tonight's proclamation is another example of it. Um, another big day for the life of NAMI is the walk that's coming up in two weeks, NAMI Walk. It'll be Saturday, May 18th. It's a great event. It's on the beautiful Mandeville Lakefront. It's our biggest fundraiser, and we encourage everyone to attend who's able to attend. And once again, thank you on behalf of NAMI for all you do uh, to help mental illness in our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jim, Jim, yes, sir. let me just say one, one thing. Uh, yes, sir. You know, Parish President Brista has started that project many, many years ago, and NAMI has moved it every year, helping people. But one of the things is it's like normal. Unless it actually affects your family, people forget about mental health yes, sir. until it hits you. And then you're looking around and you're saying, where's the help? And so I applaud you, NAMI, President Brester, for taking the initiative to have that answer ready when those people and everybody will experience it some way, some place, somehow in their family. And if they don't, they're very, very lucky. So I just want to say thank you, and thank you, President Brister. Thank you, Chairman. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if you can't walk that day, you can support one of the walkers. Just sign up. <laughs> go, to the, go to the website and sign up. Thank you, You can ma help them financially. Now, I've got one more, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Rennie and Chris, you, you want to come up, please? <laughs> We're not going to let him speak. Please don't let him get near the microphone. <laughs> so, this, is, keep the this, is a, <laughs> this is another one that, you know, it's hard to talk about, but thank goodness we have people like Chris and Rini that, that work every day to help us solve the problem. But according to the 2018 statistics from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, a shocking 32% of homeless individuals in Louisiana are United States veterans. The U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs reports that approximately 11% of the national adult homeless population are veterans. And no matter who we are or where we come from, we all deserve to feel strength and stability day by day, to have the power to take care of ourselves, and to give the availability of decent, affordable housing. And the East St. Tammany Habitat for Humanity Veterans Build Program brings people together to build homes communities, and hope for St. Tammany homeless veterans. The East St. Tammany Habitat for Humanity sponsors an annual Louisiana Veterans Festival to be benefit the Veterans Bill Program and to honor and celebrate the service and sacrifice of all, all armed service veterans throughout Louisiana. We owe our veterans so much that we can never repay. This is just one small area that we can do something and we want to. So the parish of St. Tammany recognizes that the homeless, homelessness of our veterans is a growing concern, and we support all efforts to provide affordable housing for those who need it. Therefore, I, as parish, parish president, do hereby proclaim that May 18th, 2019, be observed in St. Tammany Parish as Homeless Veterans Awareness Day. And I encourage all citizens of St. Tammany Parish to support the efforts of the East St. Tammany Habitat for Humanity in battling ve veterans homelessness by volunteering to serve and by attending the sixth annual Louisiana Veterans Festival at Heritage Park in Slidell, Louisiana on May 18th, 2019. And I'm sure one of these gentlemen want to say just a couple more words about that. <laughs> not, not the gentleman with all the uh, badges <laughs> on, badges, please. White shirt. This time you give me. No. Uh, <laughs> well, first of all, um, thank you, Madam President. And uh, I have something for you in a second as well. Uh, but listen, it's all about our veterans. And uh, Habitat for Humanity, every one of you in this room in front of me and as well as in the back know what Habitat for Humanity is all about. And it's about building affordable housing and making them available for, for folks. And that's still a, a struggle, it's a challenge. But I thank y'all for giving us a few minutes here to, to be able to accept this proclamation. And I can't do any of this without an, an amazing board. And Chris is our chair of our board and all of you. I, I can look at you now. I know a lot of you support our event. In fact, a lot of you are gonna be there and a lot of you have sponsored it. And that's how we build homes. So. 
Thank you very much for that. Thank you, sir. Yes. And then, of course, our, uh, we are do, placing our third veteran. Uh, we just put her, uh, Miss Amanda Williams, in her home, and uh, we'll be uh, talking about that a lot as well. And we actually started our 142nd build uh, in East St. Tammany as well for Habitat for Humanity. And uh, so we, we just appreciate that. And, and the West Side does an extremely good enough job as well. And we just love the fact that Habitat for Humanity is a, a big impact in this, in this parish. So thank you for the support. Thank you for all you do. Thank you. And as I, as I stand here, I'm also uh, giving Madam President uh, Pat Brister uh, uh, a commemorative uh, photo with it signed by the artist and numbered, and this will be hers as well. So thank you. That will go in our office. Yes, I yes, yes. So let's have both of these. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Bender? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the time. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman and, and colleagues, this is, this is an appropriate time with this presentation to just make sure that all of us on the council are aware of this. Many of you may have remembered over uh, several donations that we've been involved in that we get adjudicated property from the state. It, it's not owned by the parish. Uh, Terry and I had a great meeting with uh, Joey Alphonse, one of our attorneys on this subject. You know, it goes into a limbo pot, but the parish has the obligation of how do we sell these, donate them, whatever. We've already donated as a council uh, over the last five years about six or seven lots to Rennie Orsament, the board, Habitat for Humanity for the express purpose, the priority purpose of building homes for veterans, okay? These are in neighborhoods where it's just, the lot's gonna just sit fallow and grass is gonna grow and all of this. Rennie stepped up to the plate and said, look, if you all are gonna make the donations, we will start cutting the grass before you even make the donations. So. You know, Rennie is helping to keep these neighborhoods, whether they're in a city or outside of cities in the parish, neighborhood kept up, that lot kept up, and we've got three of them that are gonna be coming before <laughs> us, I believe, in our August agenda, okay? Rennie and I met last week, and I have to say, uh, it was uh, one of my colleagues, on, one of our colleagues on the Slidell City Council, Val Vanny, has been an integral part of working with Rennie and myself from the beginning on this. Now, a new city council member, Leslie Denham, has been added. Ms. Michelle Blanchard uh, recently uh, added a, a lot in her district, okay, that she's working with Rennie on, I'm aware of. So it is a great program, okay, to take lots that are very useful and put them back into commerce with the right people living in those projects, not projects, living in those homes. Rennie, Chris, thank you all so much, okay? And thank you, council members. Thank you, Mr. Bender. Okay, we'll go to number four, certificate of recognition to Patrick Carroll, James Branton, and Ty Gilmore on achieving Evil Scout. Mr. Balasaro. I make, I make a motion to postpone until the uh, month of June meeting. Two of the three in individuals are taking finals at ULL. Won't be getting out of school till late tomorrow night. So I need a second. Second by Mr. Fitzgerald. Thank you. Okay, number five, a certificate of recognition to honor Lucian Jim Saragusa, senior, World War II veteran, Ms. O'Brien. Well, tonight we are so honored to have the St. Tammany Veterans Honor Guard 
escorting our wonderful uh, person that we're recognizing. And his son, Jim Jr., gave me some information about his life, which I think is just wonderful. So with your permission, I'm going to tell him a little bit about your history and what happened to you, because it's quite a story. Keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> well, I did cut down some of what your son sent me. But uh, Captain Lucian Jim Syracuse Sr. was in the Army Air Corps assigned to the 8th U.S. Army Air Force based out of England. He served from 1942 until the end of the war, 1945. He was a pilot of the A-20 light attack bomber and reached the rank of captain. Most of his bombing missions were over France, and he was shot down over Amiens, France, while on his 23rd mission six days before the D-Day invasion. Enemy flak hit one of his engines and caused a major fire near the fuel line. Despite this precarious position, he insisted on completing his mission of knocking out a railroad depot with trains loaded with German war equipment destined to supply the Germans on the French coast in the anticipation of the D-Day invasion. He had his crew bail out immediately before completing his bombing run, and they were able to land safely. After dropping his bombs, he was not able to climb out of the cockpit due to the speed of the wind hitting him. He thought about giving up, but thinking of how his parents would take it, he gave it one last try. And by turning his back to the wind, he was finally able to escape and parachute out safely. He was injured when his foot hit the plane's tail as he jumped out. He was captured almost immediately, barely avoiding machine bullets whizzing by his head. At his interrogation, a German colonel wanted to know the number on his plane, which he couldn't give out, even uh, which infuriated the colonel. The colonel then proceeded to tell him even the smallest details of his life, growing up in Manhattan. The Germans had developed an incredibly accurate intelligence operation, which amazes him to his, this day. He seemed to know everything about his life, but he could only give him his name, rank, and serial number. From there, Captain Syracuse was sent to Luftwaffe, Luftwaffe uh, prison camp in, on the German-Polish border, border. The Germans ran the camp ruthlessly, especially after earlier escapes, and because there was so little food, hunger stalk, stalked prisoners daily. Now, during the winter of 1944 through 45, as the Russians were advancing from the east, the Germans were forced to move the prisoners from the Polish camp to a prison camp in Moosburg, Germany. 10,000 Allied prisoners were rounded up and were marched 53 straight hours in snow and minus zero degree temperatures. If you couldn't keep up, you didn't live. Many died of hypothermia. Most prisoners were so thin and exhausted, they had to throw away the only thing that was of any value to them, the food rations that they carried on their backs. After this grueling march, they were put on trains and sent to the Mooseburg camp, where conditions were incredibly bad, much worse than the camp in Poland. It was every man for himself, literally. In the spring of 1945, Patton, after an all-day artillery battle with the Germans in Mooseburg, the prisoners were liberated. When they saw an American flag going up nearby, near a schoolyard, the prisoners, to a person, wept with joy. By this time, most of the prisoners had lost 30 to 50 pounds. But for them, the war was over. The next time Captain Lucian Syracuse Sr. was brought to tears was seeing the Statue of Liberty as their ship sailed to New York City Harbor. Now, after the war was officially over, he was sent to an Air Force base in Selma, Alabama, where he met, met and married the love of his life. And he described his marriage to Mary Hill as a 53-year honeymoon. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Now, unfortunately, she passed away in 1999. They left uh, New York, where he worked for a newspaper, the Hudson Depat, D Dispatch, excuse me, until 1949. They came back to the South, and after a brief stay in Jackson, Mississippi, where he worked for another news newspaper, he eventually settled down in New Orleans in 1950. 
He became a partner in an advertising agency and eventually president and owner. And he eventually retired when he was 93. <laughs> He was born and raised in New York City in Upper Manhattan on May 22nd, 1920. Notice May 22nd, we're going to talk about that in a little while. He was the son of Italian immigrants. He signed up for the Army Air Corps in 1942. And he's written a book about his very interesting life experiences named Tarzan of Manhattan. He grad and there's a reason for that title. You might want to pick up that book. He graduated from George Washington High School in 1938. He and Mary had two children, Karen, born in 1949, and James Jr., born in 1950. He has two grandchildren, four great-grandchildren. He was a deacon in the Gentilly Baptist Church in New Orleans and was a Sunday school teacher there for 40 years. He moved to Mandeville in 2002. And my favorite thing about Mr. Jim, I've seen him when I walk along the lakefront so many times, and he passes out Christian material. He's a very, very devout Christian man. And ladies and gentlemen, on May 22nd, he will be 99 years old. So, Mr. Lucian Jim Syracuse Sr., it is such an honor to read this and present this to you. Thank you. For his honorable service in the U.S. Air Corps, shot down nearly 75 years ago on May 27, 1944, over France, Captain Syracuse was a POW in a German camp for more than 400 days. A World War II POW also receiving the Distinguished Flying Class Air Medal with clusters, American Campaign Medal, Purple Heart, European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, World War II Victory Medal, and Distinguished Unit Badge. We extend our sincere appreciation for your sacrifice, courage, and willingness to serve our great nation. And it is such an honor to present this to you. Thank you, Mr. Jim. The microphone is yours. You want to say? Oh, I got to say something? If you want. Uh, what can I say? She said it all. <laughs> well, I appreciate all the folks that have turned out here, and I know it wasn't for me, but uh, we have a, a group here that is given of their lives to the community and to the to the, to, to the their their neighbors and so forth and I appreciate all of that uh, I uh, I don't know quite how to address what I'm supposed to say <laughs> <laughs> you can say whatever you'd like I was yes. about can to I, say can I tell you what Remind them, you just got your Prisoner of War medal a month ago. That's it took right. 99 years for him to get that medal, but he got it. <laughs> and Steve Scalise presented that to him Where about a month it? ago. You have it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Anyway, I won't linger, but I, I, I want to express my appreciation to all of you in your hearts and your family and your heritage. Thank you, thank you for caring. Thank you for being great people. And I trust that many of you are believers as I am and I trust that this country is headed for the most wonderful future possible. Thank you so much for honoring me. I'm not worth it. Oh, no, you are. And uh, I hope never to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> Who? 
No. You are? Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> I thank you very much. He did. You are as beautiful as. <laughs> so sweet. He literally did get his uh, Prisoner of War medal about a month ago. Mm -hmm. It was discovered he had not, never received it, and it took Steve Scalise's office about two weeks after many others tried to get him that medal, and I was happy to be there when you received it. So thank you very much for all you have done. It was a wonderful ceremony, I have to tell you. This is the same uniform he wore in World War II. He still fits it. If it's okay, we'd love to take a picture with his family in the honor guard, too, if that's okay. Can they all come in? Yeah. This is my wonderful son. No. Okay, family and honor guard. Honor guard. And salute. Ready. Two. All out. Thank you, Ms. O'Brien. Appreciate it. Uh, members of council, I'd like to ask for personal privilege to uh, invite uh, Mr. Carl uh, Canulat to come up uh, from the mosquito abatement program we have in St. Tammany. And uh, he made a nice presentation at the agenda review. And uh, I'd like him to go ahead and do that now. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you very much. My name is Kevin Cayuet. I'm the director of the Mosquito Abatement District. Uh, our office is in Slidell, so I don't get to interface with you all too much. So I wanted to take the opportunity to uh, update you all on some of the activities we've been doing over the last year and some of the new programs we have uh, going forward. It's May, so May means termites, number one, mosquitoes, number two, and there's plenty of those out there, and also uh, the start of West Nile virus season. So we're just in the start of West Nile virus season. Um, and as, as you know, our mission is to protect the health and the quality of life of our residents of St. Tammany Parish by minimizing the risk of mosquito transmitted diseases and managing nuisance mosquitoes as well to a tolerable level. And what you probably have seen us, um, you've seen our trucks, you've seen our airplanes, that's the most visible part of what we do, but that's really just the tip of the iceberg for what we do. The first thing we have to do is know where there are mosquito problems and we do that in a variety of ways. The phone calls from the citizens, of course. We also do that by evaluating traps all across the parish at hundreds of sites every week. Last year alone, we set 1,800 traps, uh, or over 1,800 trap nights, and we collected over 700,000 uh, mosquitoes in those traps, a subset of which we've tested for the West, for West Nile virus at the state lab, and last year we tested over 5,000 pools of mosquitoes for West Nile virus. This helps us determine when and where we need to spray um, and we returned 66 of those last year that were actually infected with West Nile virus as we went. So really, mostly a data collection agency uh, that collects a lot of data and then sensitively sends out our trucks and our airplanes to go treat. But the first step to our treatment is really identifying where these mosquitoes are coming, through, coming from. Excuse me, And we do that uh, by looking uh, for the mosquito larvae in the waters uh, that they're produced. We did over 31,000 larval inspections trying to find those sources and once we find them trying to treat them at, at, you know, as, they're, uh, as they're in those waters. We apply a larvicide to over 11,000 miles of roadside ditches to try to control these mosquitoes during the season. And so you know that we have trucks and airplanes and we, we spray with those to kill adult mosquitoes often. Um, but last year, our West Nile virus outbreak resulted in 10 human cases of West Nile virus. 
And this is a real problem for us. Uh, it is simply a hard job, and we're sort of all in to combat these mosquitoes. We do it uh, by, by sea. We do it um, inspecting the marsh in our airboats. We do it by air with our, our airplanes and on the ground, of course, too. So it's sort of waging a war against an enemy that reproduces itself within five days in the heat of the summer. It's going from egg to adult. Everywhere they're standing water. So our job is really to cover best and find where those standing water sources are. So this year we're adding a new tool to that arsenal, and that is this helicopter. And we're actually leasing the helicopter service uh, to provide, uh, it is actually going to do uh, several things, but it's going to control larval mosquitoes. Um, by controlling larval mosquitoes, we'll get them before they become biting adults and before they can ever actually transmit diseases, of course. It's going to allow us to do that in neighborhoods to control backyards. As well, we can use this, this uh, aircraft to control smaller areas, certain neighborhoods at a time, where that, that help, that obviously that, that airplane can cover a lot of distance. Maybe we don't need to cover so much distance sometimes. So covering smaller, air, more, more targeted areas is very helpful as well. This larvicide that we're using is a natural soil occurring bacteria. It's called BTI. <coughs> And it's OMRI certified as an organic product, safe to be used on organic crops. And it's selective to kill only nematocerin flies, and those are our uh, thread, thread-borne antennae flies, just the black flies and mosquitoes. So it's very, it's very safe, very effective at killing mosquitoes only. And it's also, uh, helicopters also very widely used for mosquito management in, across Florida as well. So we're the first to essentially try this as a new tool in the state of Louisiana. We think it might help us uh, get a better control of our West Nile virus problem. To do this, obviously, it's going to be flying low, uh, distributing a product across over houses in people's backyards. It's going to control the mosquitoes that are produced in kiddie pools, in buckets, in tires that are sitting in people's backyards. Uh, so we're going to have a, a very extensive outreach plan that starts with direct mailings, in particular to the Tammany Hills neighborhood that will start this application in the next two weeks. Um, so we'll have direct mailings, we'll have yard signs posted just like this one uh, at nodes to, that, uh, to those intersections. We'll have obviously more information on our website. We're going to outreach to the news media tomorrow. We're having a demonstration day to see uh, how this helicopter actually applies at our facility at 10 a.m. in Slidell at the airport. We're going to do uh, interviews with the news media, radio interviews, and as well uh, post to our social media site. So if you please can, please do come out and see us tomorrow. Um, and also do follow us on Facebook and Twitter uh, to keep updated with the recent activities. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Uh, Mr. Groby. Thank you, Chair. Um, I wanted to uh, bring also to the public's attention, you know, councilmen each month get many packets of information or district updates, the agenda, all the appeals sometimes. But I can tell you, and I hope my other colleagues feel this way too, the packet you mail to our homes every month detailing every aspect of everything, every gallon, every everything you do, is probably one of the best reports well put together we've ever seen. And I have said this before uh, for your agency, but that is probably the best assigned packet I've ever seen as a councilman. It has every question that, before I can even ask them, it tells you the information. Keep it up. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Blanchett. Yes, sir. I was just going to ask if you can deliver any to us. Maybe we can get it out to parks and so forth sure. and help you get the information out. Absolutely. So thank you. Thank you again, and thank you for doing a great job for you and your staff and everybody yep. for St. Tammany Parish. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Balasaro asked for personal privilege for just a minute. This will just be a minute. I uh, just want to remind the public that's here or watching on TV that Monday evening, in these council chambers from 6 p.m. to 8.30. We're having five taxing bodies to do a Ron Robin presentation on their millages and how they spend the taxpayers' money. We'll also have the assessor here who will give a 10-minute review of <coughs> millages and answer any questions along those lines, and hopefully some people will be able to come. Thank you. Mr. Stavansi. <coughs> yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. I, I noticed a roll call that uh, Brad Thompson wasn't here. And um, we're getting ready to have our meeting, and I, I want everybody to know this is the first meeting he has missed in 39 years of serving. 
Yes, sir. And and I think maybe we ought to send the sheriff out after him or the <laughs> state police or somebody to follow him and bring him here. Actually, I found out what happened. Mr. Uh, Brule's car broke down, so he couldn't get here. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Okay. Uh, we'll go to consent calendar. Uh, just a note for the meeting, this agenda does not qualify for the use of consent calendar according to Louisiana RS 4219. Therefore, you're going to have to put up with me reading very fast and going through, but I will, and uh, we'll, we'll get it going. Uh, number one, ordinance calendar number 6162, ordinance to extend an additional six months of moratorium on the opening of new streets and angelic estates. Mr. Taladano. Move. Second. Motion by Mr. Taladano, second by Mr. Uh, Balasero. Ordinance calendar number 6163, number two, ordinance to amend ordinance CS number 18-3881, the 2018 grant budget. Ms. Long? Yes, sir. This resolution, six one, I'm sorry, ordinance for introduction 6163 is to recap for you the 2018 grant award budgets that were brought to you throughout the year. And so this will... Um, accumulate those because we brought them to you by resolution and now we're uh, summarizing that into one ordinance. Thank you. Uh, motion by Mr. Taladano, second by Mr. Balasero. Number three, ordinance calendar number 6164, ordinance to amend the 2019 operating budget amendment. Ms. Long. Yes, sir. This is amendment five to the 2019 operating budget and this is to roll over budget for open encumbrances at year end. And the administrative comment would have provided you with a list of all those encumbrances or open projects as of 1231-18 uh, that we're providing budget for in 19 to complete. Second. Mo motion by uh, Mr. Taladano, second by Mr. Balasero. Ordinance calendar number four, ordinance calendar number 6165, ordinance to amend the 2018 operating budget, amendment number 11. Ms. Long. Yes, sir. This is 6165 is a 2018 operating of a budget amendment. Amendment 11, this will be our last amendment. And uh, one of the primary adjustments here are to true up the cost allocation plan um, and also to record some of the debt refunding that took place in December, I think it was, for the coroner and the library's debt. Yes, ma'am. Motion by, motion by Mr. Taladano, second by Mr. Tanner. Ordinance calendar number 6166, ordinance to extend for six months the moratorium on property within a portion of voting precinct 914. Mr. Smith. Move to introduce. Motion by Mr. Smith, second by Mr. Bender. Ordinance calendar number 6167, ordinance extends for six months the moratorium on property abutting Highway 21 plan corridor for from Brewster Road to North to Azalea Drive. Mr. Dean. Motion by Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Fitzgerald. Number seven, ordinance calendar number 6168, ordinance to extend for six months the moratorium on property within precincts 102, 112, and the unincorporated portion of MD1 located in St. Tammany Parish, Council District number four. So moved. Motion by Mr. Uh, Balasero, second by Mr. Tanner. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'll get to that in a little while. Right. Ordinance number number eight, ordinance calendar number 6169, ordinance to amend the parish code to adopt the most current edition of the National Fire Protection <coughs> Life Safety Code and National Fire Protection Association Fire Code and to permit St. Tammany Parish Fire District number six to adopt the most current edition of both. Mr. Fitzgerald. Motion by Mr. Fitzgerald, second by Mr. Tanner. Ordinance calendar number 6170, ordinance to amend the parish code of ordinance, chapter 24, motor vehicles and tariff, article one, in general section 24-3, violation and penalties. Mr. Taladano. So moved. 
Motion by Mr. Taladano, second by Mr. Fitzgerald. Ordinance calendar number 10, ordinance calendar number 6171, ordinance to authorize the parish president to acquire a certain parcel purpose of expanding the West St. Tammany Regional Water Waste Treatment Plant. Second. Motion by Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Fitzgerald. Ordinance calendar number 11, ordinance calendar number 6172, ordinance to authorize the parish president to acquire parcels for the Homes of Mill Road Bridge. Mr. Fitzgerald. So moved. Motion by Mr. Fitzgerald, second by Mr. Dean. Ordinance calendar number 12, ordinance calendar number 6173, ordinance to authorize the parish president to acquire certain parcels for the Million Dollar Road Bridge, Ward 3, District 2, 3, and 6. Mr. Fitzgerald. So moved. Motion by Mr. Fitzgerald, second by Mr. Taladano. No, that was Mr. Thompson. <laughs> Number 13, ordinance calendar number 6174, ordinance amending the official Paris zoning map to reclassify 2.03 acres from A-2 to A-4A, Ward 3, District 3. Motion by Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Uh, Fitzgerald. Ordinance calendar number 14, ordinance calendar number 6175, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 2.19 acres from A-1 and RO to A-3 and RO, Ward 2, District 2. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Dean, second by Mr. Fitzgerald. 15, ordinance calendar number 6176, ordinance amending the official pa uh, parish zoning map to reclassify 3.318 acres from A-2 to A-2N MHO, Ward 1, District 3. Mr. Dean, Mr. Fitzgerald, second. Number 16, ordinance calendar number 6177, ordinance amending the official planning zoning map to reclassify 1.65 acres from A-4 to 1I-1, Ward 8, District 14. Mr. Smith. Move the table. Second. M motion by Mr. Smith to table. Postpone. Second by M Mr. Balasero. It's postponed. You should have said postponed. Is table? You want a table or postponed, sir? Table? Post okay. Thank you. Post Postpone. I've been advised by legal to postpone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, do, we'll go with postpone, Mr. Smith. We have to vote. We have to vote. Okay, please vote. Motion was unanimous, three absent. Mr. Dean, I did, I, I did not call on you, and I apologize. Okay, you sure? Okay. I, all right, I, I just don't want you to get mad at me. Thank you. 17, ordinance calendar number 6178, ordinance to amend the parish code to extend a dead slow, no wake zone on portion of the Chifuncta River, Ward 1, District 4. So moved. Motion by Mr. Balasero. Second by Mr. Dean. 18, ordinance calendar number 6179, ordinance to amend the 2019 operating budget, amendment number four, Ms. Loon. Yes, sir, this is amendment four to the 2019 budget, and some of the items that, we're, um, that are part of this amendment are funding for some small equipment for Tammany Utilities, control panels and pumps, I believe, for lift stations, and also with regard to the corner fund, it is to transfer funds to a capital projects fund for two projects that will be identified um, in a resolution before you tonight as well with regard to a parking lot and lighting protection system, lightning protection system. Thank you, ma'am. Mo motion, okay. motion by Mr. Taladano, second by Mr. Balasero. We'll go to resolutions. Resolution number one. Resolution CS number C-6105, resolution to concur slash not concur with Slidell annexation of rezoning of 2.09 acres from Parish HC-3 to Slidell C-4. Ms. Blanchard. I make a motion to concur. 
Motion uh, by Ms. Blanchett, second by uh, Mr. Bender. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Number two, CS number C-6109, re resolution in opposition of all proposed legislation that transfers the administration and collection of local sales tax and use tax to the Louisiana Department of Revenue. So moved. Second. Uh, thank you. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Balasero, second by Mr. Taladano. I just want to read this so everybody will have a little better idea. Uh, Representative uh, McGee uh, has House Bill 57, and uh, after looking at it and at the last regional planning uh, meeting last month, uh, Sheriff Lepento made a very nice presentation about what is wrong with this at the present time. And uh, a lot of other parishes uh, and regulatory bodies are doing the same type of thing of opposing it. So I just put a little note together. If passed, House Bill 57 would shift control of the collection of all sales and use taxes generated within St. Tammany Parish, placing the authority with the state of Louisiana. This bill has been presented without any plan or approval for the collection and disbursement of local tax revenues, and there is no available information regarding how it could affect existing or future bonds. I feel strongly that the best course of action is to oppose H. Bill 57 and maintain local authority over the collection of St. Tammany Parish tax revenues. We had a motion and a second. Mr. Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I have concerns about this. Uh, my understanding is is one positive would be uh, internet sales tax. It is, but they've already, this would not affect that. They're already collecting in this internet sales tax. Okay, instead. so that's already being taken care of. Yes, so sir. in essence, am I understanding that that we as local government and, and other agencies within local government, okay, would be turning over the collection of our sales taxes to the state of Louisiana? That is correct. This bill would allow them to collect it and then get it back to us. But, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Chairman, <laughs> I, I, I think what I heard was there's, there's no plan in place that describes the methods at this time at this time as I'm sitting here looking at you this is a general bill that does not come out with all parameters on how they would do that okay they, thank you very much I, I believe they're just floating this bill at the present time to get it out there and expecting it to be defeated just to have it out there for people to start thinking about <laughs> thank you okay I have a motion and a second. Please vote. Mr. Bender, would you like to change your vote? What are you reading? What are you reading? That's okay. Well, that, that, that would definitely give you a different opinion on it. Okay, I appreciate it. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Motion is unanimous, two absent. <laughs> number three, resolution number three, CS number six dash. 6110 resolution to acknowledge the authority of the parish president to execute a cooperative endeavor agreement with the first planning district of the Louisiana Workforce Commission, Ward 8, District 14. Moved to approve. Motion by Mr. Smith, yeah. second by Mr. Balasaro. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. 
Number four, resolution CS number C-611, resolution to take action on warranty and performance obligations. Motion by Mr. Balasero. Second, second by Mr. Taladano. Yes, Yes, sir. This is a project that uh, I've been following closely in, in my district. Um, Mr. Um, Associate is present if there's any questions, but the, the, the group has been doing a nice job. They've had some weather issues and conflicting work of other contractors. Mm -hmm. For that reason, I've spoken to the administration. I would this time move to change that to a performance bond and extend it for six months. On would, which project, Mr. Tom? This is, I presume we're on the Versailles project, although it's not identified too, too clearly in my uh, document. It's not. They're not listed identified. in the resolution itself. What's that? They're listed differently, or listed individually in the resolution. So it's about Versailles? Yeah, as I understand it. But and you I, want to change it how? I want to move to uh, change it to a performance bond and extend that performance bond for a period of six months for the reasons that I've so stated. And I, I, I'm sorry, but I presume it was under this resolution. There's multiple. Well, then let me be specific that my motion is it relates to the Versailles Commercial Park. Thank you very much. So, Mr. Taladano, we'll have to amend it to what you're looking to do. Correct. Okay. So you're making a motion to amend it. I so move. No oh. second. Okay. And a, and a second by Mr. Balacero. Correct. Okay. Mr. Tanner? I don't want to talk on the amendment. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Please vote. Mr. Chairman? I just might want to mention, in the resolution, No, definitely. So I didn't hear that part of the resolution. I was just going to mention that you might want to have it removed. And yeah, absolutely. Maybe I should have been more specific. I want the, uh, the, the original resolution only changed to eliminate the call provision, change it to a performance bond, and extend it for a period of six months. Second. Thank you. Ms. Ford, do you have that? Would you please go ahead and say it one more time so everybody can hear exactly what? I, I, I want to no, amend no, the not, resolution. Not, 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 not you. Not, not you. I'm asking Ms. Ford to do it. Thank that. you very much. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Taladano wants to amend the uh, resolution as it pertains to Versailles. He's going to remove the fact that it's going to be called and instead put a performance bond in and extend it for an additional six months. Yeah, converted to a performance bond. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Stefanski. Yeah. Trying to uh, need my mic on. Okay. <clears throat> um, is this a cash bond now today? And nope. we're turning it to performance bond? It's not a cash bond now, as I understand it. So it is a performance bond today. The Leslie is? It's a warranty, and it's backed by a bond. Right. Okay. By Thank a surety you. bond. Okay. 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 We had a motion, a motion and a second to do that. Mr. Tanner. Thank you very much. Thank you. I just want to ask the administration if, if this is what we want to do. Uh, you know, are we letting them off the hook again for another three, six months before we call bonds? Yes. According to Mr. Taladano and our staff, the work is being done that needs to be done for that, for that to be satisfied. That's if just that one deal, but this applies to a bunch, doesn't it? No, just, no, just, just, just for size. Just, just for size. Uh, okay. He just yeah. amended that one. Yeah, and I thought I limited it yeah, to the did. Versailles. And again, uh, the short explanation is there's multiple contractors. Need an explanation, Mr. Okay, yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> th th thank you. Uh, th thank you. Okay. We have a motion and a second on Mr. Taladano's amendment. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Okay. 
Mr. Taladano, would you like to make a motion to approve the second. whole second by Mr. Balacero? Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Maybe next time you might write that up for me, Mr. Talladano. <laughs> <laughs> okay, number five, CS number C-6112, resolution adopting the St. Tammany Parish Title VI program in compliance with Title VI of the Civil Rights Act of 1964. So moved. Motion by Mr. Uh, Malacero. Second by who? Steve. M Mr. Stefanski. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, <coughs> two absent. Resolution number six, CS number 6113, resolution to amend ordinance CS number 18-3977 to make changes to the 2019 capital improvement budget and assets. Ms. Long? Yes, sir. Um, C6113, as you described, is the resolution to um, add projects and equipment purchases to the 2019 capital budget. This resolution includes the acquisition of um, sandbagging equipment um, with some cost savings that we had when we put some other equipment for Public Works out to bid. It also includes a, um, the corner parking lot, a lightning protection system, I believe there's also the Safe Haven Training and Education Center is in here, and it's being funded through a grant, as well as the Lake Road Bridges is also grant funded, the increase. There's a, a small increase to Westwood Pond, and we're changing the funding source to impact fees because it's eligible under the impact fee um, guidelines. And there's also an increase for the Lacombe Drawbridge, which when the bids came in, they came in over what we had budgeted. Thank you, ma'am. Motion by Mr. Taladano. Second. Second by Mr. Balasero. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Number seven, resolution CS number C-6114, resolution to amend ordinance CS number 19-4050, the 2019 grants budget, Ms. Long? Yes, sir. Six, C6114 is to recognize the grant awards that we received during the last month. There are five of them listed. Uh, one was the one I talked about a minute ago with regard to capital outlay for the Safe Haven Education and Training Center. And then also um, there's uh, the $5.3 million for the LA Safe Funds, yes, yes. in addition to funding for lower W15. Um, and some federal lands access program, which was the Lake Road Bridges. Thank you. Mo motion by Mr. Uh, Taladano, second by Mr. Balasero. Please vote. <coughs> motion is unanimous, two absent. Okay, the attorneys are keeping me in line here. Ms. Collin, we need to approve the minutes from last month's meeting. Do I, do I have a motion? Second. Motion by Mr. Groby, second by Mrs. Stavossi. Please vote. <coughs> Thank you, Colin. Mr. Toledano, I'm sorry, did you want to vote on that one? That's because you didn't vote fast enough. <laughs> Motion is unanimous, two absent. Thank you. Ordinance for adoption. Uh, ordinance calendar number 6154, ordinance amending the Parish Unified Development Code to include additional language in the definition of funeral home. Ms. Blanchard. Mm -hmm. Motion by Ms. No. Blanchard, second no. by Mr. Smith. What, Mr. Yeah. I'm sorry. Ms. Blanchard, I'm sorry. The motion, it needs to oh. be postponed, postponed because it has not been heard by the Zoning Commission yet. Okay, I missed that point. Okay. So I move to 
postpone? You, you move to postpone until it's heard by the planning well, I think commission. I got to move to refer it to zoning because that's not been done. No, it was done when it was introduced. Okay, well, I don't recall us doing that. Uh, I know I made the motion. I don't recall that. So. Okay. <laughs> I, I guess we'll make a motion to postpone. Okay, but motion. I don't believe that's what occurred. Motion last. to postpone, second by Mr. Uh, Smith. Thank you. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. <clears throat> number two, ordinance calendar number 6155, ordinance providing for the sale of $30 million of sale tax bond series 2019 of the sales tax district number three. Uh, Mr. Akers and Mr. Ryan. Yes, sir. You must have just walked in. I didn't see your, love, right, uh, your, your, your smiling <laughs> face uh, since it started. But anyway, Mr. <laughs> Akers, you go right ahead, sir. Uh, thank you, Jason Akers with Foley and Udell. This is the fun part to get, announce the sale results. So I'm actually going to yield to Mr. Ryan and let him talk about all the good things that happened yesterday, and then I'll speak very briefly about the ordinance to be adopted. Now, you know, every time I let him go first, he tells me <laughs> he's going to refer to you. So I'll we, tell you what we're going to do next time. Whoever's going to go first, go first, or raise your hand so I know, okay? <laughs> we do that on purpose, Mr. I, I understand. I understand. I'm going to tell you something a little while about your umbrella, too, before you <laughs> but anyway, you go, you, you, you're ratting you go, me out. You go right ahead, sir. I did, at least I didn't leave my computer, okay? <laughs> uh, so yesterday we opened bids at 11.15 on uh, Parity. It's a bidding system that allows people to bid. And uh, the President Brister, myself, and uh, a representative from Foley and Udell um, sat in her conference room for about 15 minutes. And it was very interesting because we'd have one bid and then two bid and then three bids and then one bid and then four bids and then two bids and then seven bids and then three bids. And Sat there and watched that for about 15 minutes. But at the end of the day, we had 11 bids, which um, I believe Mr. Schluter indicated he has never seen 11 bids before. Uh, no one in my firm has ever seen 11 bids before, and there are 13 of me that do this um, with 100 and almost 200 years of experience between us. Uh, so to get 11 bids on your debt was phenomenal. I um, mean, really. I mean, I don't know how much experience Foley Udell has probably got 300 years of experience in this state. We've probably got 200 years between our firms. Probably f in 500 years of doing this, I mean, combined experience amongst all the professionals. Never seen. I haven't. His firm hasn't. But 11 bids is phenomenal. That means a lot of people like your debt, wanted your debt, felt good about investing in St. Tammany Parish. Um, uh, Jason and I had kind of a bet as to where the, the rates would come in. We, we were both thinking sub 2.5. Uh, the final rate, the tick, which is the total interest cost, um, was 2.12, uh, which is phenomenal. Um, if you think about it, you know, uh, uh, President Brister pointed this out uh, yesterday. You know, inflation's hovering around 2%, a little bit under 2%. Uh, so, I mean, your net borrowing cost on this is less than a quarter of 1%. I mean, it, you got a great rate, and again, I've said this before, uh, you know, my hat's off to the administration. Ms. Long, she does a phenomenal job. Uh, the policies that she suggests to you all, that you all take and adopt and, and make ordinances, um, it's, a, it's a team effort. I know it is, uh, but my hat's off to you all. It's a phenomenal job, phenomenal interest rate. Um, you uh, are going to wind up with a, right at $34 million dollars. Uh, for projects on a $30 million bond sale. Wow, okay. Um, because people bid, bid they, they bought your bonds at a premium, um, and what that basically means is that if you sold me um, $2 million worth of bonds, um, I paid you more than $2 million for the bonds. Uh, and that's how your interest rate got so low. Uh, great day for St. Tammany Parish. My hat's off again to the council, the administration. Ms. Long's always been a joy to work with. Uh, thank you all for your help, and thanks for saving my umbrella, Don. And I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Akers after that. Thank you. I'll, I'll echo what Mr. Ryan said as far as the number of bids, but also the, the bid premium being $4.6 net of costs over the amount of the principal. 
Uh, I've personally never seen one that's over 10% net, um, and this is you know, 10 and a half, I'm sorry, uh, uh, nearly 15%. So uh, very, very good day. I'm not going to read all 22 pages of the ordinance into the record. I'll let you skip that. We uh, mentioned before that the ordinance as adopted would incorporate all the terms from the bidding. This ordinance does that. I'm happy to answer any questions, but with your approval tonight, we'll move forward to close on May 22nd. At that day, all the money will be available to you and be available for uh, appropriation for various projects. As we said, we're happy to answer any questions, but again, congratulations. It's been a really good week for St. Tammany Parish. Thank you. Uh, did you want to say something, uh, Madam President? <laughs> Please go ahead. Uh, it, it was a very exciting 30 minutes, I will tell you that. But when it went from five to one, I thought, uh-oh. <laughs> but it was, it was great, and I appreciate all the help from uh, Jason and Jim, but also from the council. You really um, helped us get to this day and we will, you will be seeing the work come along. So we do have a list of projects. Um, we didn't want to really put it out there until all was done, but we have them available. Uh, we set out to do capacity only. This is not maintenance and repair. We have, we have funds for that. We still have our two cent sales tax that we will not be using to, to pay these bonds. But this is to increase capacity on our roads in St. Tammany Parish, which we all know we need badly. So I wanted to thank the council and also uh, Jason and, and Jim for all the hard work. And of course, Leslie, well, I, I tell you, she's, she's the rock star. So you, thank you. Your administration makes our job very easy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, Jim, did I, uh, Jason, did I hear you say that we're going to have 34 million instead of the <laughs> Yeah, I didn't want you million. to say ah, that. Okay. <laughs> Oh. Huh? Did, did I hear you say that? Or did I did I misunderstand you? Jim said that. Jim said that. Okay, okay, all right, all right, all right. Um, you yeah. see, I ne tell you what, you two guys on this tag team, y'all got to get squared away. Okay? <laughs> but, but net of all costs, you will have right. a, a significant amount. Great, yes. great, great. Mr. Okay. Lorena, uh, President Brister was was perplexed as to what to do with the extra four million dollars, and I, I assured her that you could help her. I what to do. Well, oh, yeah. him, well, I, 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 I was help. looking for four million dollars to do something in my district. That's what I'm hoping for, okay? As long but, as it's capacity. But, but nevertheless, uh, on a serious note, uh, you know, President Brista and uh, you all have done a fantastic job, and I'm going to look right at you, Leslie, okay? Uh, as, as we've heard four times now, and this will be the fifth time, I believe, that we have those great ratings, and those great ratings only come from people like you and your department that put the time and effort in the residents and the people in St. Tammany Parish do not realize because it's not public. And I really hope that this gets out there because it should be out there so that people see what this administration has done and you have done and what we have received in St. Tammany Parish. So I just want to say that and I'm going to say it again. I'll say it one more time. Thank you very much, Mr. Taladano. Thank you. Uh, Thank I have a question, Jim, but before that, I'm going to just say something because it's come to my mind twice. Once, w watching that wonderful gentleman, Captain, uh, two, listening to uh, some of our great employees, and, and I say this from the bottom of my heart, this is one of the best jobs in St. Tammany Parish. Uh, we as councilmen, uh, these people in the administration, we know how hard they work. Hopefully the public knows how hard it works. This is one of the best jobs in this parish. And the fact that we can do these type of uh, programs and, and this kind of tremendous uh, development in capital expenditures uh, makes me proud, but, but it makes me more proud for Pat, her administration, and all the people that work every day in the trenches. We appreciate it, and we certainly appreciate your effort. And I, I, I just, I'm just compelled to say that. On a, on a more specific business note, I'm interested in what was the range, Jim, in the bids. Do you recall? I don't because the truth is we only verified the last or the the, the first the the three best bids. I know, um, actually. If you know, yeah, yeah, I sure do. Um, Just a curious. Uh, question. Sure, no, it's it's actually this is this is also impressive because of the eleven bids, the lowest bid, as we mentioned, net rate was two point one two. The highest bid was two point one nine. They were all within that spread. So. Good job. Yeah. Thank you very much. Exciting. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Mr. Bender. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, 
Mr. Mr. Taladano, and of course, I, I extend my smiles over to the administration because he appropriately said it. Jim and Jason have appropriately said it. You know, we vote on a lot of things, but I have to tell you, this is a proud moment for me personally, and I would bet for every member of us on the council is the people who have to vote on this, elected by the people. And to hear 2.12, uh, a premium of $4 million extra, which, by the way, we all know this, that just doesn't fall off of a tree, okay, <laughs> into our hands. This took a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Um, and to hear 2.12 to 2.19, boy, it is certainly good to feel like they all wanted our business. So finally, I'd like to offer as well um, – and, it, and, and to be fair to these two gentlemen and their firms, they've worked a long time putting all of this together with the administration and Ms. Leslie shaking her hand, yes. And appropriately, I, I would like to send my kudos, and, and I'm sure all the council members feel the same way, to Jim and Jason and their two firms, and obviously, again, to the administration. Thank you. And to my colleagues for... You know, we, we, we move forward. We move forward as, as the greatest parish in the state. Thank you all. Thank you. Mr. Stefanski. I'll try to make it brief. I just want to thank uh, uh, Jim and uh, Jason and their firms. I really think that having been on this council as long as I've been and police jury, I've never seen anything like this. I think it is, it's phenomenal to see these kind of rates come in. And Leslie, appreciate your staff and everything else. But I want to point out the leadership in this parish has been Pat Brister. She's worked this parish with a conservative view and, and kept that conservative issue before us all the time. And, and to me, this is an excellent fashion in a way, to, and this is the end result of the excellent fashion that way she leads this parish. Thank you very much, Pat, Thank President you. Brister. Thank you. Who could have a better day than all of those accolades? And Captain Sarah Coos said I was beautiful. I'm sorry. <laughs> How can you talk a day like that? <laughs> th th thank you, Mr. Savant. Move for the adoption. Second. Uh, motion by Mr. Taladano, second by Mr. Uh, Balasero. Please vote. This is big in the end. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Thank you. Mr. Ryan, I'm not letting you get away yet, okay? <laughs> Uh, at our last meeting, you left that pretty red umbrella here, okay, for about a month. And I tried my darndest to hide it and keep it because what I was going to do was, rather when everybody was here, I was going to have, like they have on Channel 8, they offer a rain umbrella. And I was going to say that we pulled your name because you've been coming up here so much, okay? So I, but you got it right before I got here, so congratulations to you. I'll, I'll tell you, a couple of months before that, I left my portfolio, and I, and I had to call Don, and Don walked out and found it and, and kept it for me, and uh, I, I was embarrassed to call him about the umbrella. But when I went back to get the umbrella last time I was here, I had my computer with me, and Don says, you're not going to leave the computer, are you? <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, drop your wallet. I'll take care of that. But uh, you can have the umbrella, okay? Well, thanks for everything, Thank guys. You. We Thank appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Number three, ordinance calendar number 6156, ordinance to officially dedicate and name the parish fairgrounds midway to Dennis Sharp Circle. Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, so move. So move. Mr. Uh, Tanner seconds that. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Mr. Fitzgerald. That is a well-deserved honor for Mr. Shaw. And, and thank you. And well, thanks. Th 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 thanks uh, for on, on Dennis's behalf. Um, you know, uh, he, uh, I, I still feel as though he's a, a mentor uh, to some extent. I, I know he looks down from above and has a pretty good laugh every once in a while at my, my attempt at this. But uh, um, he... Um, he, he deserves to be remembered, and uh, I know he, he always will with with this or not, but uh, uh, thank you. Thanks for the kind words. Thank you, sir. Uh, number four, 
Ordinance calendar number 6157, ordinance amending the official planning zoning map to reclassify 15,000 square feet from A-4 to A-4 and MHO. Uh, Mr. Tanner. I'm going to move for adoption, but I don't think it's in my district. Well, I can only read what they have I here, understand. and they have number That's six. So six. I'm going to assume it's your district, and I'm going to take that as a motion. Second by Mr. Taladano. Thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> he don't know. That's okay. Don't worry about it. Mr. Fitzgerald, Mr. Teledano. Motion is unanimous. Two absent. Number five, ordinance calendar number 6158, ordinance to authorize the parish president to acquire certain parcels for the purpose of expanding the Slidell, Slidell Branch Library. So moved. so moved. Motion by <laughs> Mr. Bender, second by Mr. Stefanski. <laughs> yes, sir. You go right ahead. We have Miss Kelly LaRocca. In, in attendance tonight, and uh, Kelly was the assistant director of the library, got to know put me off, but <laughs> okay, uh, with the South Side L Library, and you know, Donald Westmoreland built a fine, fine team. I was not surprised at all when Kelly was named by the library board to be the new library director. So Kelly, congratulations. You wanna say a few words? No, okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, sir. Mr. Stavonsic, did you wanna? No, I Okay. I think I Oh, you go. Okay, that's fine. That's okay. I don't. I, I don't blame you, but, but, but that's okay. Okay, please vote. Motion is unanimous. Two absent. Number six, ordinance calendar number six one five nine, ordinance to declare lot five as surplus tax adjudicated property and authorize the donation of said property to the East St. Tammany Habitat for Humanity. Uh, Ms. So Blanchard. Moved. Motion by Ms. Blanchard, second by Mr. Stavansi. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Number seven, ordinance calendar number 6160, ordinance amending the official pa Paris zoning map to reclassify 1.562 acres from A-2 to HC2. So moved. Four. Motion by Mr. Balasero, second by Mr. Taladano. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Number eight, ordinance calendar number 6161, ordinance amending the official parish zoning map to reclassify 32,338 square feet from NC-4 to an I-1, Ward 3, District 2. Mr. Fitzgerald. Uh, so move. Motion by Mr. Fitzgerald, second by Mr. Dean. Please vote. Motion is unanimous, two absent. Okay, we'll go to an off the floor item. Uh, we have uh, one resolution. We have number one, resolution of no objection to the proposed 2020 census track and block groups as presented by the Census Bureau. We need a motion and a second to pull off the motion by Mr. Taladano, second, second. by Mr. Tanner. Needs to be a unanimous vote. Voting no? Okay. <laughs> we hadn't had a census meeting, but one time, I want the census committee meeting. All right. Hold on one second. That's Motion by uh, Mr. Taladano, second by uh, Mr. Balasero. Please vote. Oh, God. <coughs> 
Excuse Mr. Stefanczyk. He's not okay. Okay, okay. we can't hear it. Yeah, Motion thanks, fails. Thanks. Yeah. 11 yeas, one nay, two absent. Okay, we had no, one vote uh, against, so we can't pull that off. We'll have to call a, a special meeting of the uh, census group, and then we'll have, uh, have to call another special meeting because this has to get in by the middle of, the, uh, middle of May. Yes, right. So I, I, will, uh, I will set up a, uh, I'll have Don set up uh, a schedule to do that. Okay, that's all we have. I thank you. Motion by Mr. Balasaro. We adjourn.